Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, good to have you back on. Happy to be here. Well, investors have been nervous about equities in the past week because of the sudden rise in interest rates. Some say this might prompt some action from the Fed, specifically reviving a policy called Operation Twist. What is that policy? Do you think it's coming, and what would it do if so? Okay, well, the simplest way of describing Operation Twist is that the uh, central bank buys long-term uh, securities, long-term bonds to bring down long-term interest rates. Now, what central bank usually does is that it buys short-term interest rates, pulls down the short-term interest rates, uh, and uh, hopefully that will pull down the longer-term interest rates as well. But uh, in some cases, even though the uh, central bank has pulled down the short-term interest rates as long as, as far as it'll go, uh, right now the U.S. short-term interest rate is at between zero to zero point two five percent, so it cannot really go any lower. But uh, recently, the longer-term interest rate has been rising. So in this case, what the uh, central bank would do is that it would sell uh, short-term bonds and with the proceeds by long-term bonds so that it will uh, reduce the price of the uh, uh, long-term uh, it will increase the price of the long-term bonds and uh, it will re uh, hopefully reduce the yield and the long-term interest rates that go with it and uh, because uh, it's selling short-term uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, selling and buying short-term bonds and long-term bonds. Uh, the balance sheet of the Fed doesn't change, so uh, it doesn't affect the uh, Fed's balance sheet, but it hopefully will affect the longer interest rate so that it doesn't rise as quickly and it will actually hopefully make it fall uh, uh, which is the problem that they're having in the United States with the 10-year uh, uh, Treasury bond yields. Well, and these issues continue uh, seemingly to affect stocks on Wall Street. Uh, they were again down, led by the big tech stocks and other uh, growth shares like Tesla, which was down 4.5%, Apple down 1.4%. What's the story today in the global markets? Okay, well, as you mentioned, the uh, markets on Tuesday fell in the United States after rising quite a bit on Monday. Uh, Dow fell by minus 0.5%, uh, S&P by Zero point, uh, fell by 0.8% and NASDAQ by 1.7%. Uh, the markets uh, seem to be nervous because we had such a rapid rise of 10-year bond yields uh, last week. Uh, and ironically, uh, stock markets are nervous because the uh, higher rates uh, seems to point out that the economy will recover and uh, they, the demand will uh, shoot up. Uh, uh, faster than what they uh, thought it would be at the end of last year. Now, uh, there's a fear of whether the increase in prices will be reflation that is returning to roughly the levels of inflation that you had before the coronavirus, which was about 2%, uh, which was actually the uh, Fed target rate, uh, or whether they'll have an inflation, which is the uh, inflation rate above the two percent rate, uh, and right now there's a big controversy over uh, whether it'll be reflation or inflation that's higher than that target rate. Uh, but ironically, even though the markets fell today, the uh, yields are coming uh, down from the uh, highs that we had last week. Last week, the uh, 10-year bond yield went up to as high as 1.54 percent, but it's falling now to 1.4, 1, 13 percent, and somewhere between 1.4 to 1.5 percent was about the, uh, where the 10-year uh, bond rates were before the coronavirus hit the United States. Europe, uh, they did considerably well. Uh, FTSE, DAX, and CAC all went up, though not by a great amount. Uh, they seem to be uh, uh, having a uh, it, they seem to be really, uh, relieved that the uh, U.S. 10-year Treasury rate is coming down. Um, and then in the Asian market, uh, the, all uh, Asian markets today rose. Uh, Shanghai actually rose uh, by 1.9 percent. Uh, Hong Kong Hang Seng Index rose by 2.3 percent. Uh, this is attributed partially due to uh, the uh, 
10-year bond rates in the United States returning to normal. Uh, FOM, the Fed FOMC member Layer, Layer uh, Brainard saying that Fed will continue to buy bonds at the current rate and possibility of China lowering their interest rates. And uh, today, the Korean markets started out uh, really shaky, but also closed with a gain. It looks like retail investors taking some profits while institutions were buying. Tell us about the local markets. Okay, well, uh, close beef uh, rose by 1.29%. It ended today at 30. Uh, 3,083.04, uh, and uh, it was a bit unusual today. Uh, it was not the foreigners or individuals who led the market, but institutions. Uh, so uh, individuals sold 655 billion wands worth of stock. Institutions bought 691 billion won of stock. Uh, the reason that the uh, market recovered is attributed to uh, the Chinese market because the Chinese market uh, rose, Coast B rose as well. Coast Stack also had a fairly good day, though not as uh, good as Coast B. It rose by 0.83% to 930.80. And if we could talk about real estate for a minute, uh, data show that here in Seoul, the average home price last month rose to more than 800 million won. That's a little over $700,000. It was just 10 months ago that it crossed 700 million won. So this is according to KB Bank. And the government's been trying to bring prices down by tightening credit. So is it a lack of inventory or what's driving prices higher like this? Okay, well, in the long term, it's just people want to live in Seoul area, even though the uh, population in Korea is falling, and even though even within the Seoul area, uh, the uh, Seoul population is falling, people want to live in specific areas. People want to live in specific areas because it is convenient, and people want to live in Seoul area because uh, there's a lot of different types of jobs available, and in the absolute numbers, more jobs are available in the Seoul area than any other uh, area in uh, Korea. So uh, if you look at the rise in real estate prices, at least until recently, it was specific areas in Seoul rather than uh, all around Korea. But uh, in the last few months, other areas, housing prices have been gone up as well, and that's widely attributed to the current uh, policy of uh, expansive monetary policy as well as fiscal policy, uh, which gives a lot of act, uh, which gives people a lot of access to a lot of money at very low interest rates. So uh, when the housing prices started going up, uh, people started uh, to invest in housing. More, uh, and for uh, people who weren't overextended to begin with, uh, it was fairly easy for them to borrow at a low interest rate and put it into the uh, housing market. Uh, so we may have a beginning of bubble in uh, some uh, housing markets in Korea. And then this was worsened uh, because of uh, regulations put in by the uh, government, which said that the uh, you had to uh, live in the housing units that you bought, uh, and uh, you could uh, unless uh, you gave up uh, units of house. If you owned multiple units of housing, you had to give up. Uh, some of the uh, housing that you own unless you want to pay a uh, very higher uh, rate of taxes. So what, all in all, what it did was it concentrated the demand in certain ho uh, neighborhoods in Seoul, uh, which reduced the supply and increased uh, demand, which obviously increased prices. And uh, especially where it concerned regulations about uh, rent controls and uh, people living in uh, housing units that they bought, uh, the government seemed to have shot themselves in the foot because that really increased uh, the uh, decreased the uh, supply and increased the uh, price of housing very greatly. And I don't think that those type of regulations are really necessary. Dozens of rounds of those regulations put in place over the past few years, but not yet having their desired effect. Professor, thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you.